And now I'd like to invite uh, Nikki Evans and John Murphy to give their presentation on Jigsaw E. Uh, Nikki is the project manager for the um, Impact Accelerator unit. Um, so she's running both the Jigsaw E and the Startback projects and the other ideas that we're doing. And John Murphy is uh, our patient champion for the Jigsaw E project. And let Elaine come get out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Uh, as Stephen said, I'm Nikki Evans. I'm the project manager for the Jigsaw E project. Um, I'm delighted that, that John Murphy, our patient champion, can, can join me today to showcase Jigsaw as a partnership. Um, I'm very lucky to work in the Impact Accelerator unit. I think we have a very exciting role to play in terms of the outputs that you all contribute to in the research. We get the exciting job of working with the NHS to put them back into healthcare and make changes to services and healthcare models and really make a difference to the patients. So today I chose to showcase Jigsaw E to you because I think this is a project that really is making a difference, both here in the UK, but also in, in Europe. So what is Jigsaw E? Well, Jigsaw E is a joint implementation of guidelines for osteoarthritis in Western Europe. So it supports primary care in five European countries to address the unmet needs of adults with osteoarthritis. So the countries that we're working with in this project is the UK, the Netherlands, Norway, Denmark and Portugal. And it all came from best practice work that we've done around osteoarthritis care here in the UK. The overall aim of the project is to provide high quality care and support for patients with osteoarthritis by supporting self-management. And all this is done through the implementation of the NICE OA guidelines. On the slide, you can see the jigsaw approach that we use. So for patients presenting at their GP, age 45 and over, with joint pain, what we want GPs and practice nurses to do is give a model consultation where they provide a clear diagnosis of osteoarthritis, an explanation, and provide initial information. They then refer on to the nurse or another clinician for ongoing support. We love a really good story in the Impact Accelerator unit, and I think Jigsaw has been on one hell of a journey. So some of you will probably be involved with the Mosaic study, which was where this project originally started. Out of the Mosaic study, something quite unique happened in the fact that before the, the study was published, we had one GP who was involved in that Mosaic study. He put his hand up and said, I believe in this. I believe in the approach. I believe in the outcomes. I want to implement this for my patients right here. I don't want to wait for you to publish this study, which is quite unique. And uh, he went on to be one of our GP champions, funnily enough. <laughs> So he, uh, alongside Keel, managed to uh, get some local regional innovation funding for Shropshire, and he piloted uh, the innovation in his surgery, which went amazingly well, and it went from there. So Krisha sealed her fellowship, um, and we managed to get the fellowship to get enough money to be able to spread the innovation across Shropshire, Telford, North Staffs, and Stoke. And as we were doing this, there was a lot of interest from across Europe and collaborators that were already working with at Kiel said, actually, we're really interested in this as well and we think that this could be used on a European scale. So we went for some European funding under EIT Health and got it. Hence the start of Jigsaw E and the E stands for Europe. So we've been on an incredible journey so far and we're starting to see some of the major successes coming out on a European stage. And I just wanted to share a few of those with you. As we've heard this morning, community of practice is featuring an awful lot in implementation work. And it's something that we're very proud of, that we have a project-wide community of practice. So it involves five countries. It involves the experts in those countries, practice uh, GPs, practice nurses, physios, patients, they're all part of our community of practice and they've come together to share the passion, 
they understand the burden, they see the opportunities, and they play to their strengths so that they can fuel the project <coughs> and take it forward. As you can see from the pictures, we've had two community of practice meetings so far. So we had the original launch in Kiel <coughs> in September 2016, and then we followed it up this year with a community of practice meeting in Madrid. You can't tell from that picture, but it was over 40 degrees and we're all melting. But it's a lovely picture. Another one of our successes is we've got um, an innovation package coming out of this project, which means that it's easy to implement. So having a, um, a strong innovation package means that other people can take the package and can roll it out in their area. And the package consists of the model consultation, so that's the ideal delivery of a consultation by a GP or a nurse, to ensure that diagnosis and clear explanation and support is given to the patient. We've also got a jigsaw e-template, which can be embedded into the GP's electronic clinical system on their computer, so that it prompts them when they're with a patient who's experienced joint pain, it prompts them to do best care. We've also got a high quality training package for clinical and non-clinical staff. And this has been translated and adapted across the five countries and is being rolled out currently. And we have bespoke patient information. So again, we have the guidebook, which I'm sure you've all seen, which was designed and written by patients for patients with some guidance from clinicians. Our PPIE within the project is something that we're incredibly proud of. Uh, they've worked hard on PPI guides and glossaries developed in partnership with the link group here at Kiel, and they've been put onto a European stage, so they've been translated and adapted and taken forward in their own countries. We have our knowledge broker, she's Laura, who's with us today, and she's got a unique role within the project, and she's worked hard to develop networks and partnerships and transfer of that knowledge from clinician to patient. The EIT health funders have already given us feedback on our PPI to say how strong it is and that in their eyes it's a beacon of best practice across Europe and something that they want to work with us to roll out to other projects that they're funding. And finally, scaling up. So this is something where we've started to have success and we're continuing to push forward. So our stakeholder engagement... We've managed to get buy-in to the project from NHS and healthcare practitioners across all the different countries. As you can see from the picture, that's a couple of clinicians from the Netherlands who have got the translated printed guidebook in their hands and they're currently using it nationwide in the Netherlands to support patients. The NICE endorsement has been critical for us. So they've endorsed the e-template and that has helped us have a wider spread across the UK as it's deemed as a, a quality standard for the project. We've worked hard with our West Midlands Academic Health Science Network, who bring together academia, industry and health. And they've helped us to spread the project within the West Midlands, but they've also helped us to work from one a NHS, AHSN to another AHSN with their network <coughs> nationwide. All partners are working really hard with their own national guidance and are making changes in each country around the care that osteoarthritis patients are receiving and ensuring that where possible we're getting the jigsaw approach into guidelines. And the EIT health community, as we've now been funded, this is our second year of EIT health funding, we are part of their community now. So it offers us an opportunity to grow and to link in with other EIT partners and to see the opportunities to go forward. So why have we had all this success? Well, in my eyes, it's mainly due to these 22 champions that we have in the project. I can't speak highly enough of them, and I really think that champions, whether they're clinical or non-clinical, have really made a difference to implementation work, and this project shows it. So initially, we worked hard to get clinical champions, which you can see in blue. So we have GP, nurse, physio, and pharmacy champions. But it, we were very quick to realise that there was a real space for non-clinical champions to play a massive role in this project. So we've worked hard with the Healthy Lifestyles team in Telford and the health champions and care coordinators in Shropshire, who see patients on a daily basis and have the time to provide them with extra support and have really made 
some changes and some uh, mind, mind changes, um, attitudes within their, their local area that have made clinicians sit up and, and take notice of what they're saying. So it, in my eyes, they have real attributes um, to becoming a champion. They have an awful lot of passion and enthusiasm, but they also understand that the burden of OA has on primary care. So they, ch they channel this to make sure that we're driving the project forward. They have lived experience, so whether they're a patient with OA or they're a practitioner that's been on the front line and can see the care that's needed for OA patients. They have the patients at the heart of everything they do. And they're networked and true leaders in their field. So these champions are really well thought of in their local community. And they're true implementers. So they're prepared to come on the journey with us to overcome the barriers, to lead innovation and to spot opportunities. And they've got behaviour change strengths. And this is where we come on to Hazel, who's one of our clinical nurse champions. And she really has got behaviour change strengths. This is her surgery, Portcullis, in Ludlow. And um, she managed to change hearts and minds in that surgery around their OA care. Uh, we met, I first met Hazel when she came on our jigsaw nurse training. And it was one of those moments in the project that really changed things. And I thought, I want to work with this lady. She can make a difference in Shropshire to this project. And so she came on board. And I'm delighted she's with us today. And uh, this is a little bit of her story of being a clinical champion. It's, it is an enormous problem that affects a lot of people. And I think it is one that isn't given much attention, but actually has an enormous impact. It does affect your whole demeanour and your whole approach to life. Um, and I think that's an enormous aspect that we are neglecting. And, uh... and if, if the GP sees a patient who comes in complaining of osteoarthritis, joint pain, then um, they can refer into either myself or to a admin in the healthcare assistant and we can talk with them about things like pain relief, exercise, weight loss. The overall aim is to try and encourage patients not to see I've got osteoarthritis, I need a joint replacement, but there's actually a lot that I can do to reduce that risk of having to go through extensive surgery, which doesn't come without its problems. Um, so it is things like um, changing the negative image of osteoarthritis being wear and tear to actually being wear and repair. You can improve the function of the joint by strengthening the muscles round about. People who are overweight are reducing their weight, uh, encouraging exercise, encouraging healthy diet and lifestyle. Um, an appropriate use of analgesia. I think it's perhaps taking a lead role within the practice for um, encouraging other staff to be aware of this problem and also trying to create links, to perhaps trying to create a network amongst nurses within the locality so that they can support one another. The, when patients come in to see me for their medication reviews or their other reviews, that I'm sort of focusing on this problem and, and actually identifying it, whereas perhaps it hasn't been identified before. So the guidebooks have been very useful um, in terms of a source of reference for patients, and they're very enthusiastic to take something away. Um, I think that's the message that we've got to get through to people here is that they can walk out of that room knowing that they, they've got support and there's something that they can take responsibility for and to be positive about it and it will have beneficial results even if they take a long time to achieve. I've also um, on the television screen that is presented in the waiting room where patients are waiting for their appointments 
had um, you know, the, an adaptation of the poster to advertise, I suppose, the service that is available. I think one of the some of the qualities that make a good um, champion are having a passion for the condition, being enthusiastic, being persistent as well, um, and an encourager. Because you need to encourage patients, you need to encourage other staff. Thank you, and thanks, Hazel, for everything you do. <laughs> And from one champion to another. So the patient champion role in this project has been exceptionally valuable. John and Cathy, who's also here today, bring a unique perspective and experience to the project to ensure that we keep patients at the heart of everything we do. So I'm really pleased that John's here today to share his story with you. Times like this, you're going to want to be a little better prepared, I think. Anyway, my name is John Murphy, and together with Cathy Fell, we are member. We are the patient panel for Jigsaw E. I'm a member of the Link Working Party and a lay representative on the steering committee of the Stratified Primary Care for Musculoskeletal Pain Program. Eight or nine years ago, after getting some brilliant physio treatment on my knees. <coughs> as part of the Keel BEEP trial, I was asked if I would join the trial steering committee as a lay representative. I thought for quite a while, but eventually I decided that I should give back something, so I gave it a go. Not realising that once they had you, they wouldn't let you go. <laughs> Only joking. I've had the privilege of working with so many talented, dedicated patients and professionals on many different projects, but none has stimulated my imagination more than Jigsaw E or the Link Working Party. Nikki has given you an overview of Jigsaw E, and I would like to talk about the project from a patient's point of view. The rollout of Jigsaw E gives patients a unique opportunity to engage with health professionals, patient groups in both this country and internationally. Engagement always works best where people feel valued as part of a team effort, where the passion for PPIE is to drive the delivery of high quality services for OA patients. A year ago, I was invited to a conference involving Keele University and representatives from both clinicians and patients of the Netherlands, Norway, Denmark, and Portugal. This really fired my imagination. Each country showcased their particular health service and PPI system. PPI set up across Europe was quite patchy and not as well organized as we have in, at Kiel. I think it's fair to say that all countries were impressed with the Kiel presentation and except for cultural differences, they would love to have the involvement that we have at Kiel. All the sessions were quite inspirational for me particularly the enthusiasm, and so we would have heard a lot of today, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm of the delegates, and I hope that we were able to show our enthusiasm during the patient group meetings where lots of questions and suggestions were discussed. We all agreed that we should have a fundamental role to play in research and should be appropriately represented. Why? Because most of us are experts in their particular condition. When patients are encouraged to talk about their experiences and provide constructive criticism, as we did, they can open a whole new conversation. PPIE has empowered patients to feel like they are part of the solution. The more we get involved, the more tools we have to make a difference. Knowing more about how patient groups operate in other countries and to compare this with the gold standard that we have at Keele, shows that alignment of the systems is not going to be easy. But as I said earlier, except for cultural differences, no one said that it would be impossible to align our PPIE with that of Europe. We didn't want to reinvent the wheel, but to learn from each other. One of the successes of the conference was the interaction between the two. 
between the two groups, between all the groups, particularly during breaks in the proceedings. Everyone was eager to chat to the other delegates, delving further into the workings of their system and their involvement with the PPIE. PPIE. That's me above talking to Professor Vyland of Leiden University, discussing PPIE and other important topics, mainly wondering what was for dinner that night. <laughs> there was plenty of opportunity to contribute and we had lots of conversations, particularly concerning the adoption of the Kiel Guidebook and the alignment of material which could be used in any future guidebook. It was important to us that we share our knowledge with each other and the, and the Netherlands, for instance, include a section on joint replacement in their advice to OA patients. The first bit of collaboration was taking place. The Dutch panel were keen to take our guidebook and incorporate it into a translated guidebook for use in the Netherlands. This has now been done. No doubt there are differences, but I understand that it is substantially the same as Kiel. In Portugal, where communities can be quite spread out, use is made of community police, who command a lot of respect in their local areas. They visit the elderly, the lonely people, ensuring that they have contact and presumably making sure that any medical problems can be spotted, something that perhaps we could encourage. Great efforts were made to ensure that everyone involved was valued. The clinicians wanted patient interest to be at the heart of discussions and decisions, wanting the public to be properly engaged at the planning stage to ensure relevance to patients, to bring independent and external perspective to research, effectively bringing the outsider inside. Patients are the most underused resource in any healthcare system, but we know that, don't we? It was quite obvious from the conference that it was not just about consultation, but also about greater collaboration, a common approach, learning from each other. There were no boundaries between us. We were just one body of people trying to make a difference to those with arthritis. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, John, and thank you to Hazel. And I think um, John's story and, and Hazel's video just show how important champions have been in, in Jigsawry and um, will continue to be uh, as we go forward into our year three of our project uh, next year. Thank you for your time. Now, we're running a little bit over time, um, so we won't have any questions at the moment, but um, there are as you see in the programme, there's plenty of opportunity for discussion and asking questions uh, later on this afternoon.